What's up everybody? Main Fly Guys here. Um, gonna tie a hollow fly today that's inspired by KVD, Kevin Van Dam. He's a uh, Bass Masters legend. And he came out, I mean if you know anything about the, <clears throat> the Bass Masters, Kevin Van Dam is probably the, you know, the goat of bass fishing as far as rod and reels go. But he came out with um, God, maybe a decade ago, this sort of revolutionary bait, and it was a shad pattern, and it won him a bunch of Bassmasters tournaments, you know? So, what I thought was, man, I could basically make the same fly, just, uh, just a fly, not a, not a lure. So, this pattern is just, um, it's a baitfish imitation, but it's called the KVD Shad, I guess, just the fly version. Um... So to start, <clears throat> oops, excuse me, to start, we're gonna add just a little bit of bucktail. For non-hollow fly ties, I use, this is a buddy of mine's uh, deer that he shot this fall, but it's a crappy tail, it's not very good. So the fibers aren't long, they're not very straight. And if I'm not doing a hollow tie, I'll use fibers like this, like kind of crappy ones. So here, just take a little pinch. Um, just take a little pinch not a lot and make a uh, make a tail so all I'm gonna do here is just make a little tail something like that so that looks fine all right and I don't want to go up the shank very far so make sure you cut your butt sections very very close here um, I want it to stay pretty much on top of the hook too. Don't let it roll. All right, so then just cover those butt sections up. Oops, that's probably fine actually. And now work your way back. And what I'm going to do is add feathers around it. All right, so I'm going to add feathers around this, and I just have all white, and they're going to be. Um, longer than your white tail but I'm gonna add one on the side corner top side that just kind of work it all the way around um, and where you covered your bucktail is where you want to wrap in the feather so what I do is I take all of my feathers take them all that I'm going to use and I make them the same length you know roughly and then I'll strip the fuzzies off where I want it to where I want to start tying in the feathers. So here, so you have something like that. So I'm just gonna tie these feathers in, I'll speed it up for you guys, so we can get on to the next step. Okay, so now we have something that looks like this, where our feathers are just tied in. We have a nice little feathery base here. Um, and what we're going to do next is tie in some flash. This can vary, I don't like a lot of flash, um, I just use a little bit, but what I do, so here I just have some Flashaboo Mirage, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, what I do is I'll cut a little bit, come on, cut a little bit, so I just have a, not a lot here, maybe seven or eight strands of it, and I will tie it in on the left side, or side closest to me about halfway, measure it about halfway, tie it in, and then I'll fold the other half over so it's on the other side, and then kind of spread it out so it sort of fans over the top. Just use your thumb to sort of fan it out, and that way it kind of drapes, just kind of drapes along the feathers rather than sort of like a lateral line type deal, it sort of drapes. And you can just sort of pull them, spread them out. And there, we have sort of a drape instead of a line. Um, okay, so now we're gonna start our hollow ties. And the pattern's gonna go white, white, yellow, light blue. Um, I want this to be pretty, um, a pretty bulky fly because the shad that it's trying to imitate are fairly bulky in size 
Um, so you don't want it to be too slender, like a, like a smelt or something like that. You want it to be kind of bulky. So when you do your hollow ties for this fly, be careful not to uh, make the wraps too much, uh, to make it lay too flat. So here I'm just going to measure it out. I want it to be about halfway down the feather, my first one. So I'm just going to measure it out. And that looks about good. I'm going to pull out any short fibers. Alright, and where I want it, I'll cut it. A little snip. Okay. And then work your way to the front of where the feather tips are. And here I'm just going to do one, two loose wraps, and then kind of push on it to either side with my thumb and it'll spin a little bit there we go it's not bad and then I'll work back to cover up my loose ends here And if you want, this is an opportunity where you can cover this sort of blank section. Um, you can go back over it with tinsel or some dubbing or whatever to make it look flashy, you know, if you want that. Um, I don't for this pattern, so I'm not too worried about it. Alright, so I've gone back, covered my tips, worked back to the front. Now just take a little tube. Make sure everything's okay. You're just going to take a tube, press it. This is a good opportunity to see are my fibers equally distributed around. So you can look from the front and say, okay, I should probably pull this, you know, or do this or whatever. But these are good for right now. So I'm going to work it back. Okay. And then just... Do a few wraps out front, making sure those fibers can't go anywhere. It's important to make sure your wraps are straight here. If you angle them, then your fibers will be angled as well. You want them to be straight, so all of your fibers have the same angle um, that you're looking for. Alright, so that should be about good. Alright, so let's check it out here. That's not bad, a little bit more. I want it to, the more wraps that you do, the more touching wraps that you do, the flatter it will be. Alright, so that's not bad right there. We have a nice cone. We'll adjust this a little bit. We have a pretty good cone there. My fibers seem to be laying down how I want. Um, Sometimes I would make it like this if it was a longer one. I'd make them lay down flatter, but like I said, I want this one to be puffed up a little bit because the shad are typically bulky, so I'm going to leave it like that. Um, so we're going to go on to the next one. I just move forward a smidge. Same thing with white. You're going to do two whites in a row. I'm going to speed this up just so that you guys don't have to watch that again. Um, but it's the same exact step as the one we just did. All right, so now we've done our second hollow tie, and as you can see here, it's just, it's about the same trajectory, um, but it's pretty bulky, and that's what I want. I want it to be um, very bulky, so I'm gonna move forward a little bit and do the next wrap, which is gonna be yellow, and the next one's gonna be light blue, and it's this color pattern. It's not so much the style of the fly, but it's this color pattern that, um, that really gets bass going and you know I'm I didn't discover it KVD did and he knows what he's talking about so I trust him as to why he picked these color choices for you know kind of his first bait um, so here I'm just gonna do the yellow in and I want it about the same trajectory as my previous one 
And I want it almost the same length, pretty much the same length. And this is actually not bad. So I'm going to trim it and wrap this one in. Actually, it's pretty good right now. Two loose wraps, spin it. All right, see if you need to adjust anywhere. And I do. Now my tips are a little too long here, right? They're overlapping the previous wrap. So what I'm gonna do is come in and snip them. And if you have a rotary vise, this becomes very easy, but so I just snip the ends, that way I can go back and overwrap them without, without impeding the previous hollow tie. Okay, so I'm gonna speed this up, because you guys know the drill, so I'm gonna speed this one up, wrap it, and then push it back. All right, so here my yellow is just about the same trajectory, but a little, a little pitched a little bit more. And I'm okay with that. I don't care. I, I like the yellow and the blue to be sort of more pitched. Um, just gives it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more density or, or the, the appearance of density. So my last color is this baby blue. It has to be baby blue. Can't be dark blue. Um, so make sure you find a nice baby blue tail. And I like the yellow to be more prominent, so I use a little bit less for the baby blue. Um, I use a smaller clump. Also, it's my last tie, so I just, you know, I don't wanna crowd the eye or anything like that. Um, so, I want it to be about the same length, roughly. Yeah, come on. All right, so I want it to be about the same length. You can just measure it up and say, yep, yeah, that's right about the same length. That's right where I want it. Um, and then just snip off the ends here. All right, and you don't have a lot of room here, so make sure that you are careful with your tips. All right, just make sure you're careful with them. Um, again, same thing, two loose wraps. There, I just did three for no reason. And if you, like here, I have nothing on top, right? So I need to just use my thumb and Pushing it around the eye is always the most difficult because it doesn't want to spin around the eye. But just work it, take your time, make sure it's a nice even, even keel. All right, that's not too bad. And you can always check, remember, you can always push through here and say, okay, do I need, do I need to work anywhere? And that looks pretty decent. So here again, I'm overlapping, so I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna trip the, trim the tips of the blue so I don't impede the yellow hollow tie. Okay. So boom, there we go. I'm gonna go back. You guys already know the drill, so I'm probably just gonna speed this up. There, yeah, how's that look? All right, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is add some eyes. Now you can add regular eyes, you know, just like the living eyes, and you can just stick them on and glue them on, but it crushes it and it removes the bulk because we have a lot of bulk here. So instead, I like to use tab eyes right here. They have little tabs on them and all you do is place the tab where you want it, right? So wherever you want the eye, so I think right there is a good spot. Lock down the tab, 
and now your eye is attached, but it's not, see how you can push it down? It's not taking away any of the bulk, right? And that is, that's important. To me it's important at least. Because I like that, I like to have that bulk. And then all I do is I flip the tab back over, I'll cut it to wherever it needs to be, and then I'll just wrap it like that. And I'll just keep wrapping it. Um, so I do that on both sides. And again, it's not super important now because you have these tab eyes to line up the eyes perfectly, although it helps, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Because you can always move them. Because they're tabs. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right. So there we go, I'm gonna flip it back. Cut it. And if a little bit of the tab is showing, it's not a big deal. Um, all right, so there we go. Little head there, probably a little too big, bigger than I like, but whatever. Um, so then I'll just whip finish. Oops. And we're all done. Now, <clears throat> This fly is very bulky right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go run it under some hot water and let it dry and show you guys. You know, if you like it really, really bulky, that's great. Um, I like it to sort of maintain that shape. So I always run them under hot water. And after you've run them under hot water for, you know, it doesn't take long, just a few just a few seconds um, they will take a shape and that shape will hold if you dry it like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go run it under some water and I'll show a picture here at the end of sort of what it looks like after it's dry so here back up the camera a little bit here's our fly a nice uh, KVD fly there's a one last option is the shad dot on the side. So what I do is I have here just a, a, a marker here and I pull all the hair together, hold it all together kind of like this, pull it tight and then I put a little black dot on there. So <clears throat> yeah, I'll just do it like this. And I put it right behind the eye. Now it will spread out but there you go, that's what it looks like. Nothing crazy, but you know, the Shad have that little black dot, and the KVD model has it as well. So, if he's got it, I gotta have it too. Just a little black dot, do it on both sides, nothing crazy. And that's it, that's the KVD Shad. So, um, like I said, I'll show you the picture after I, I wet it and stuff, but hope you liked the video. If you got any comments, feel free to leave them below. Check us out on Instagram at Main Fly Guys, and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.